This episode is brought to you by Ariston Specialties in Bloomfield, Connecticut, makers of amazing olive oils and other Greek delights. Check them out online at aristonspecialties.com. That's Ariston, A-R-I-S-T-O-N, specialties.com. Welcome to the new Food Schmooze Party Podcast at faithmiddleton.com. Coming up, some easy and delicious ways to cook chicken or fish. I'm Faith Middleton, and the all-stars are here. Chris Brasberry, chef and co-owner of restaurant Metro, Metro Beast in Simsbury, Connecticut. Joanne Church in New London, our editor Carl Franklin in Quaker Hill, and Mark Raymond in Old Weathersfield. Our mascot, my dog Bon Bon, is curled up in his, you know, fluffy little bed at my feet. <laughs> and as soon as we Go do bon this bon. show, I'm taking him to his favorite place. Uh, that's the downtown Guilford Green, and he just sniffs all over that green. And then we go for meatballs that he Second loves. Second fire hydrant on the left. Yeah, <laughs> the green at a That's place bon called Bons. Blues. So um, we eat outside yeah. on your porch and we're all bundled up. So we all have our favorite ways to make weeknight chicken or fish. I know Chris and I love to make um, it close to the same way. So Chris, start us off. Oh, yeah, I'm a schnitzel guy because my Mm -hmm. mom is Austrian. So when everyone had like Prince Spaghetti Day, we had schnitzel night. So I started pan frying as a kid. There was always a cast iron pan on the stove at the ready. So pan frying, a couple things you need to know. One is you want to pan fry thinner pieces of meat, right? Or vegetables (laughs) or fish. So cutlets is what you're looking for, right? Because you don't want to you don't want to pan fry like a chicken leg, right? Yeah. Because that would take a lot of work and turning and stuff. So what you want to do is a hot pan. I use cast iron and a little amount of oil. That's the main difference between pan frying and deep fry, right? Is the amount of oil. Temperature is about the same. You want to get that oil to about 350 degrees. And I know people that adding like adding a little bit more. It's almost like a shallow fry where they'll add maybe a half an inch of oil to the bottom of the pan. I'm more in the <laughs> camp of less is better. So I always start off with just about an eighth to a quarter inch of oil. What kind of oil? Yeah, I use regular olive oil. So not yeah, oh, I olive use oil. not olive the oil. extra okay. virgin. Yeah, not yeah. the regu- not the extra virgin olive oil, right? I get yeah. the cheaper mm-hmm. version. I always buy it in a gallon because I like using it, and it's usually called a hundred percent olive oil or pumice olive oil, and it's uh, the okay. olive oil they make with the olives after they make right. It's the second pressing where they right. heat blah blah blah, and it has a, a really high temp uh, burn temperature, so you can take that oil, you know, past three fifty, which is what you want, so it doesn't burn. Um, then you, so basically you put the oil in the pan, heat it up. Again, you want to be around 350, couple easy ways to do it now. If you have a, like I do, and I still use it at home because it's, it's not, it's not an exact science to figure out the oil. I have one of those laser thermometers and I just point it right at the bottom of the pan. I love it. It's so easy. If it says 350, 360, you know, you're in. I always tell people to go a little bit. Okay. Is it bad? Let, let me jump in there yeah. on, on yeah. you and say, so is it bad? I've, Chris, I have never measured the temperature of my oil in about a, th- uh, ever. I nope. just like put it in there. Yeah. I, I, I uh, take some know. water and I, you know, I spray my fingers at it. And yep. if it really sparks up from the water going into the olive oil, I say, okay, that's a good temperature. Yep. So, and I think you know that because you've done it so many times. Like uh-huh. my mom, when we were growing up, she never temperatured the oil. I'm just more of a, <laughs> I just do it because I, I, I love my little, and maybe Carl can jump <laughs> yeah. in. I love my little like laser yeah. thermometer. I do the window while I'm doing it to see what it's like outside <laughs> and what the, the insulation of my window is. I do the wall. I, do, uh, then do your I wife's the, forehead. Yeah. I got the radiators across the room. Might as well see if the heat's on. It is an amazing gadget. <laughs> I want so, one. Yeah, it's more for okay. fun, but but okay. the heat 
without like sounding funny, but the heat is super important, right? Because yeah. the, if the oil isn't hot enough, what you ever your pan frying will absorb more oil than if the oil is hot. So you don't want, and then right. that'll that'll impede the crispiness, the browning, all that. So okay, it's really so, important so to make sure your oil next? is hot. What happens next? Then, what happens next? So. I so schnitzel is a breaded chick I and it can be anything. I do chicken schnitzel. Um and I usually use thighs. So I buy a thigh, I pound it pound it thin in between two sheets of plastic wrap or two sheets of parchment paper. So it's nice and even about, you know, half inch thick. Then I bread it, so flour, egg, and then breadcrumb. Then I put it in the oil, so one side is down. And the cool thing about pan frying is Unlike ste- uh, deep frying, the steam escapes through the top, right? So that it cooks uh, a nice, even way, right? So it's a nice, even way of cooking. Uh-huh. Then you probably about a minute on each side is good enough. You flip it, you know, get that side. I always say the side you start with always looks the best, right? So you want to make sure that's your showpiece. So if you're presenting it on a platter and stuff, you just flip it once and then it goes right on to, I usually do a little... Uh, a cookie sheet with some parchment paper on it or some paper towels on it, you know, to just blot it uh-huh. dry. Yeah. And then I always, if I'm doing a big batch, I always have my oven on it like 200 degrees with the door open as I'm doing it. And I have another sheet pan in there or a little yeah. platter in there. And I just keep my cutlets warm. So if they didn't cook all the way through, they'll finish. But it'll also keep it warm as you do it in batches. Because the other thing about pan frying is you don't want to crowd the pan. So if you have like a 10-inch pan, you don't want to have the bottom totally filled with chicken. You want to have a good inch of space in between your cutlets so you get the heat to come back fast, the oil to heat up fast, right? And that's how you get that nice crispiness. And I'm telling you, all you need with this chicken is a squeeze of lemon on top. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, I, I used to do sauces. I used to do all these things with it. And now I just make sure I get a bunch of lemons, cut them up into pieces, and yeah. put them on a platter. Oh, yeah. And boy, that's so, so good. So, that is um, great. Chris, you said, um, uh, which is traditional, uh-huh. uh, egg, flour. Uh, yeah, flour, egg, and, and breadcrumb. So I just want to mention that I, I have... You know, um, neighbors who are gluten free, mm. they can't sure. have flour. And mm-hmm. I want to say you don't even have to have flour. So if you've got somebody in your family who is gluten free mm-hmm. for health reasons, you don't have to have flour. You you can just do the egg yep. and then into the breadcrumb. Or you can mess. use cornstarch. Well, breadcrumbs. I always have keep cornstarch egg. around and they have Gluten. panko. And you can also do, which is more like they used to have Francaise, right? That style. Yep. And that is just the flour or cornstarch and egg. And you can pan fry. And that's yeah, amazing that's what, too. That's that what gets I'm nice and oh, crispy yeah. and brown. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So that's Chris. That's how you do that. Yep. Well, wow. Um, so yeah, you you you're still doing it in a more complicated way than I do. Oh, uh, but I do. Mine you know what? You get about good 30 at seconds. it. You, uh, <laughs> but it's so. I'm telling you, there's no better weeknight meal than uh, chicken schnitzels. Yeah. Adults I love it. Kids, uh, me it's too. Like, kids I cut love it into, it. like if they're kids yep. over, I cut oh, them I into know. strips. You know, and then kid- I just do theirs, and they're like, "Oh, you're not having schnitzel. You're having chicken fingers." <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, the adults it's got, are having sex. It's got that crunch. <laughs> yeah, the crunch is in yeah, this. That dish, texture, you know, yeah. and that is so. And you can do this with fish because I was saying fish or chicken totally. when we started this show. Yeah. Okay, so let me just jump right over to Carl. Carl. Hey. Um, Carl Franklin. He's so Carl. Um, how do you? If you were doing chicken or fish, how do you mm-hmm. do yours? What's well, the simple I do way? mine in a, a gluten-free and very low-carb way. So. I do the traditional three station like egg wash, flour, and breadcrumbs. But my flour is uh, keto chow chicken flavor, chicken soup flavor, <laughs> which you can get at ketochow.com. Wow. It's, a, it's, a, it's a powder, but it has you know some some protein powder and things in it and some gums, Seasonings. so it really makes it sticky. And but- then for my breadcrumbs, I use uh, crushed pork rinds. Mm. Oh. Oh. Yeah, chicharron. Talk oh, about oh, flavor. Right, yeah. 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 Even if you're not keto or gluten free, you're yeah. going to want to do this just for the yeah. flavor. Oh my God. So good. No oh. kidding. I have a friend that uses Rice Krispies. Oh, wow. come on. Oh. Right. There you go. Pulverizes oh, rice. Never thought of it. He pulverizes Rice Krispies. 
I've yeah. heard of cornflakes wow. before, but I've never yeah. heard of yeah. Rice Krispies. Rice Krispies. Hey. Well, chicharrones, basically, you put it, I put them in a food processor, and I add, like, uh, three to two ratio of uh, chicharrones to Romano cheese. Ooh. And the Romano yeah. cheese, when it gets hot, it melts around and creates a yeah. solid crispy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it also browns well, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm. That yeah. sounds so good. Wow. I wish we, what time's dinner? Why don't we have a chef on the show who makes these, whatever thing we talk about, the chef makes it for us. Well, Carl's we the one who turned me on. I'd never heard <laughs> of battering with, you know, breading with pork fat. I'm still waiting for you to come <laughs> over for dinner, guys. <laughs> I know. It's a little chilly. Um, okay. So I'll go up. I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, we get to see each other because we're looking on a, a screen um, at each other just so we can keep track of who's doing what. And if somebody's waving their hands about something, we can stuff. <laughs> so I'm now looking up. If I go up one square, like Hollywood Square, I see uh, Mark Raymond, who's been flying all over the place for um, hey. f- with with his wines. Um, so, uh, I mean, all over the country I'm talking about. So, <laughs> Mark... Yeah. What do you do? So, how what would be your way of making uh, either fish or chicken uh, in a with a with a batter on top? Yeah. So, a classic Friday night dish for us is flounder fillets, and nice. we'll take uh, fresh flounder, which are real thin and delicate and easy, and we'll do the egg wash, and I'll do it in cornmeal instead of using the um, but the chicharrones are amazing. We've done that oh, yeah. with chicken all the time, and I love that. I love that idea. Uh, but the the cornmeal is 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 along the lines of gluten free again. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, so you do the egg wash, uh-huh. and we put a little bit of seasoning into the cornmeal, and it makes uh-huh. it nice and crispy and crunchy. And like Chris said, you get that pan good and hot, and they, you flash fry them. You're in and out. Like I mean, I think each fillet takes maybe maybe. Two three minutes tops. Yeah, you cook so quick. Yeah, you pull them out. You put them onto the the uh, the paper towel plate that's you know soaking up the excess oil, and then just fresh lemon. Sometimes I'll do like a lemon dill butter, you know, to oh, yeah. to jazz it up, be a little fancy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and then you know, it's just so simple and so easy, and then a nice crisp fresh white wine with it. Yeah, what, what kind of wine, Mark? Mm. So, Do you for, have a wine to recommend for yeah, someone? Yeah, yeah. Actually, like um, I, I had this the other day out out to dinner with, with my daughter and um, son. We were celebrating her graduation, and we were talking uh, to the waitress because she had never tried this grape before, and, and the grape is Torontes. And it's, it's uh, from yeah. South America. This one, Finkale Origin Torontes, is made in Argentina. Nice. But not Finca from... El Origin. So that's F I N C A E L Origin. O R I G E N. Finca El Origin. Okay, it's a beautiful label. Yeah, okay. and it's got this beautiful Nautilus, gold Nautilus on the yeah. label with a dark blue wow. label. Mm. Um so the grape um is is somewhat unique. It's it's one of the one wines that they don't produce in Mendoza. This you gotta go far north into Salta. And Salta is starts at about ten thousand feet above sea level, growing Ooh. these grapes. Wow! And challenging what you get is this beautiful, beautiful, crisp white wine that is uh. so aromatic. The the white flowers you get in the nose right off the bat mm. pull you right into the glass. You just want to uh. jump in there, uh-huh. and then you've got beautiful notes of pineapple and lemon. Um, very crisp, very refreshing, and it's got a little bit of a, a texture to it, like a length, length, um, sort of like a velvet, velvetiness on the palate as well. Vinca El Origin. So if your wine store, not wine stores are not, you know, the size usually of supermarkets, and so <laughs> they can't have everything, And but you can still get any wine that we talk about Absolutely. if you call ahead mm-hmm. and say to them, would you bring this in for me? And they'll have it within a few days. And you, then you can go get it and make the dishes we're talking about. So, Mark, how much, like roughly, a bottle would this be? This would be fifteen dollars a bottle. Think nice. of origin. Okay, that's my and sweet who's spot. the distributor? Because uh. you want to tell your wine store, and that's how they look it up in a book. Yeah, this comes from Brescombe and Barton. Brescombe and Barton. Okay, wonderful. Okay, now we're boy, and now now I'm starving as usual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Or and at so least is, want that wine. So is my dog, Bon Bon. I know. Oops. Okay, so we're going to take a very quick break, and then we'll be right back because we want to hear what Jillian Church does. And um, and I'm going to be you know going online while we're taking the break so that I can... Uh, see where I can get this. Wine. Get this <laughs> right away. Which is let like us jumping. know. They'll deliver it's, it's, it by it's dinner. Like jumping yeah. into a stream as far Called as I'm Dial concerned. a Magnum. Okay, yep. so we'll be right back. I'm Faith Middleton. This is the new Food Schmooze podcast, and we are at this address, faithmiddleton.com. Okay. And the all-stars are here, Chris Prosperi, Carl Franklin, Mark Raymond, and Joanne Church, it's your turn. So if you were making a fried chicken or fish, how would you do it? We, we all seem to be doing it pretty much stovetop. So how would you yes. do it, Joanne? Mine is stovetop. It's a great weekday meal. It's a one-pan codfish tacos with mole sauce. The whole recipe oh. takes at maximum 20 minutes. So I start- For mole? Well, it's not a true traditional mole. You'll hear me out. All right. Okay. Well, it's completely, I don't, it's what the recipe called it. Sure. Okay. So in a skillet, you um, medium high heat, a tablespoon of olive oil or avocado oil, and you put in half a white onion slice, two whole cloves of garlic, two whole Roma tomatoes, and you just saute it till the onions are golden, maybe at maximum five minutes. Then you stir in a teaspoon of cumin. And then, depending on who you're serving, a tablespoon or a quarter cup of chili paste. And what I use, uh, Jasmine Thai is a Thai restaurant in New London, and they have what's called kimchi sauce. Uh, So it's like $5 for a side of kimchi sauce. And I love that in this recipe, but it's so hot, I would only use like a tablespoon. Yeah. And then I'm soaking a quarter cup of golden raisins in one cup of water, warm water, and then I'm going to add that to the skillet. And then you take everything from the skillet and put it in your blender, and there's your mole. It's so delicious, and it's so great as a dip the next day, because there's always leftovers. So then in in the same pan, (laughs) I'll melt two tablespoons of butter, and I've got a pound of cod. Now, depending how long or short the cod is, um, it'll be, I'll put a tablespoon or two tablespoons of anise seeds on one side yeah. of the fish. Wow. And then I'm going to fry the fish seed side down for about three minutes. And then I'm going to flip it over, cover it, turn the heat off. And then I'm going to get my tortillas toasted. And I'm going to break up the fish, divide among the tortillas, spoon on the mole sauce, uh, top with shred it iceberg lettuce, maybe some cohita cheese. Mm. Delicious. So good. So and you're making me hungry. I think you win the flavor award. <laughs> oh my gosh. No quizzy with the anise. Is, it is oh. so flavorful. Uh, flavor I'll tell bomb. you what, the, Toron- the Torontas will go with that too, even with a little bit of heat. That's heat? what I thought. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> wow. Where else are you going to go where people tell you to put, you know, these pork rinds on the other? Yeah, I know. Fish. In this case, all these what spices. Kind of is this, this anyway? Oh, wow, yeah. that sounds so good, Joanne. It's um, so good. Okay, so so I do the simplest thing, and that is um, to you know put a plate out, and I put uh, because uh, my neighbors are gluten free and they're here a lot. I um, use Alea's. Uh, Breadcrumbs. Oh, yeah, and they're yeah, yeah, yeah. gluten free and they're, free. Um, you know, Italian flavor. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I, I just dip the chicken in uh, sometimes egg batter, sometimes not. I just put the chicken straight into the breadcrumbs on a plate nice. uh-huh. and coat both sides, heat up the oil in the pan. And when it's good and hot, in goes my chicken or fish of some kind. And it's shorter if I'm doing, even though I've thinned the chicken down or gotten the little little thin slices of it, I'm, you know, I'm ready to go. And I just, you know, do two things and then boom, into the pan it goes. And nice. as soon as, and I keep peeking under there and as soon as it yeah. gets a nice golden color, <laughs> then I just take it out and serve it. Wow, and so good. I don't, yeah. I don't know anyone, it's not just kids, I don't know yeah. anyone who doesn't like 
the, this dish that we're talking yeah. about. And it's versatile, it's right? Comes on this. You could you could put it on a sandwich. You could put it on top of some greens. You could put, put it, it on yeah. a flip flop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Red sauce pasta. Oh yeah, it is, yeah. It oh, is. Yeah. It's just versatile, and it reheats too, right? I mean, you can take the chicken or fish or whatever and just reheat it the next day. Or mm-hmm. I'll even I've been known to even put it cold on a sandwich or on a salad. Yeah. Right oh, yeah. the next day, right out of the refrigerator. It's a great so leftover. Lemon, lemon is the oh, just the best with this. Sometimes I take a lemon oh. jam. That ah, I have, ooh, and I put that in a little dish, and I st- I mix in lemon juice with the lemon jam because it's sweet, and I yeah. put lemon juice, and it's got that. Then that now I've got a little bit of thickness, and I've got uh, that kind of edge between sweet and sour. Oh, so good yeah. from the lemon, and, and I just kind of drizzle that on the yeah. the uh, cooked. You know, fish or chicken, yeah, and yummy. It you know, people amazing. seem to like it. I know. Yeah, I isn't this really? That. Isn't this fun? This is just like the <laughs> easiest yeah. thing to do. It's un- unbelievable. Lemon, lemon, and any kind of acid really is necessary when you have anything yep. fried to cut through the fat. You know, yeah. it just breaks it up in your mouth and wakes up your palate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It makes my Favorite. mouth happy. <laughs> yeah. You, you yeah. turned me on to a few years ago. Um, uh, lemon risotto, which I had never heard of. I had never even Ooh, thought of. yeah. But mm. I, the, not the last time, but the time before I did schnitzel at home, I just whipped up a real small batch. I did, I don't even know, a quarter cup of rice. And I just did it in a little saute pan. And all I did was just douse it with lemon juice. And then I did uh. a little lemon zest on top and I put my schnitzel on top of that. And oh my God. So nice. good. Yeah. Really, that sounds good. Oh, that Lemon sounds so soda. good. <laughs> I have. Oh. So, so listen, I, I have to thank my all-star buddies here for their ideas on, on this show today because they're just so good. And it, it's giving me that feeling I always get. But really, I really have it this time where I want to just <laughs> bolt out of my chair and, <sighs> and either go, I wish I, had, I knew a restaurant that would make this for me. You know, I'm I, yeah. I don't go in restaurants, eat, yeah. you know, because of the the weirdness that's going on. So I um, I eat outside on porches. If restaurants have an outside s- section, I just bundle up, bon bon my my dog, our sh- our show mascot. He, I bundle him up, and we we go and we eat outside, and mm-hmm. it's it's really kind of fun. Uh, as long as it's not snowing or raining, that's what we do. And uh, I wish, I wish, I wish I could find a restaurant in downtown Guilford that that does this exact thing that we're talking about. I haven't oh, found yeah, it yet, but I'm going to keep looking. Like a yep. chicken cutlet, or right? Or a yeah. fish cutlet, yeah. something that you could just, yeah, yeah even get pork to go. Pork cutlet, yeah. Breaded. Ooh, or, yeah, pork yeah. too. Oh, pork Nicely pounded great. thin. Yeah. 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 And it doesn't have to be meat too, right? I mean, I've done uh, uh, eggplant. Works great yeah. and oh, yeah. Fried. Right. Right? Just yeah. and you can do if you get big eggplants, you can cut big discs. And if you get smaller ones, you can cut it lengthwise, you know, and, and half inch and then, you know, do the same thing. You could bread it or like face uh, it or just put it in breadcrumb and just pan sear that or pan oh, fry yeah. that. It's one of my favorites. Eggplant in this preparation's a little tomato sauce on it. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Listen, it, if, and if you don't if, if you don't drink wine. You know, if you're um, a non-alcohol drinker, there is this dish is so good. I did this recently one night. I just felt like having bubbles, and I thought, mm-hmm. no, I don't want to have wine. Is I'm going to get tired, and I, I wanted to watch something on TV, and so I said, oh, I'm I know what I'll do. So I just got club soda, and squeezed yeah. a little lemon in it, and it matched up. Yes, yeah, sure. You know, beautifully. Perfectly, with, right? Mm. So, yeah, if you're not a wine drinker yeah. or an alcohol drinker, yeah. this is the way to go. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, I've had a ball. Yeah, you too. My friends. <laughs> okay. Now I'm so, it's great. We're all together again. Uh, I know. Yeah. Let's do more. Yeah. Let's do more. I know. I yeah. know. It's been, it's been a while because we've all had, you know, either travels or sickness or whatever. And so mm. here we are. Back in the saddle. Yeah. It yeah. really is. It's just a dream. Here's to 2023. Okay, um, we love being with you. <laughs> 2023. And, uh, you know, pull up a chair at our table. Next time, we'll be right back next week. 
Um, so I'm Faith Middleton, and you can find us at faithmiddleton.com. Um, me and the All Stars, who are the biggest stars as far as I'm concerned, and we'll we'll be back. And so see you. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.